Okay, so in this part of the series, we're going to be creating the database table that stores the data for our users, uh, which is obviously um, the initial step that we take to work out which data that we want to capture from our users, uh, the data that we want to store, and then eventually the data that we're going to give back out to them. Um, in this part, uh, we're just going to be creating the users table, and this is going to store the registered accounts. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll add more tables that deal with different things, um, but in this part, we're just going to focus on the users table itself, uh, and that will allow us to create our overall uh, login and register system. So, I've already created a database table, and I've just called this LR for login and register. Uh, you know, you can call your database table anything you like, uh, usually relating to your site in some way. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead now and create a table uh, on this database. So I'm using phpMyAdmin, which is an interface uh, to our My MySQL uh, server and our databases. Uh, and this is available in the browser. So you can go ahead and download this, and it's available with um, pre-made up packages like XAMPP or WAMP, anything like that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, and create this table. So I'm going to call this users. Now the number of columns I know because I've already planned this out um, and it's going to be seven. Uh, but if you don't know, that's fine. We can just go and put in any value here and we can add uh, fields as we go. Uh, but I know that it's seven, so I'm going to choose seven. Uh, you can see that just down here we can or add one or however many columns on here. So that's not a problem, just uh, pop in a number if you're not too sure. Um, you might choose to store more data as well than I am. Uh, you might choose to uh, expand your registration page to let your users say, ask if they want to sign up for a mailing list or you want to capture that, might want to capture their gender, uh, anything like that. Okay, so the first field that we're going to create is uh, will be the primary key and this will identify the users uniquely and also provide us with an index for our table. So this is going to be user underscore ID. Now the type is going to be an integer. This just means it's a whole number. We're never going to have point values in here. Um, the others w w that we're going to look at are varchar and text eventually. Uh, but for now, we you know really don't worry too much about what these mean. I'll try and explain as I go along. Uh, so if we scroll all the way along, AI stands for auto increment. You can see that it's just popped up there as a little tool tip. Uh, we want to check this. Uh, essentially what this means is this value will increment for every uh, record that we add. So the first user, say Alex, is uh, 1. This field will automatically inject the value 1. Um, if we create another uh, record, say Billy, he'll be 2, Dale, 3, 4, and so on. And the index here is primary, so we always have a primary key for a table uh, to keep an index. Uh, okay, so the next one is uh, straightforward, it's username. Uh, we obviously don't want this to be a number, we don't want users to be uh, signing up with numbers for username, so we want a varchar, which means variable characters, and we have to provide a length here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say 32. We'll, we'll incorporate the uh, length checking into the back end of our, of our code eventually. Um, we also want a password. And I'm going to set this again to a varchar, and this is going to be 32. Now we're going to we're going to be uh, storing this as an encrypted string, so bear this in mind. Um, we'll initially be using MD5, um, which uh, equates to a 32 character string, however long the password is of the user. So 35 and upwards, you'll be safe. But this may need a bit of tinkering around with uh, if you're using different encryption methods. Obviously, uh, MD5 isn't too secure, but we're just going to be using it for for simplicity for now. Um, okay, so uh, we want to store the user's first name and we also want to use this to store the user's last name uh, and these will both be variable characters again. I'm just going to set these to 32. Uh, you might want to increase this, uh, obviously as you go along feel free. Uh, email, I'm going to set to a varchar and I'm going to set it to a very strange number, 1024 or 1025. Either one is the maximum uh, characters for an email address. Uh, I always do this out of habit, but it's entirely up to you. You, you can choose a shorter value because it's unlikely to be, but I always like to just put it in there. Um, and lastly, active, and this is going to be the state of the user's account. Um, initially, what we're going to do is we're going to create the login and register system without email activation. Then we're going to go ahead and incorporate email activation into the back end um, and, uh, and ask users to um, activate their account by email. 
Now, when a user uh, initially registers, this int is going to be set to zero to mean that they haven't activated their account. Uh, so if we look at the top, you can see our, our, our table labels here. Uh, you can see that if we uh, scroll, where is it? Oh, default here. So this default value here, uh, we can set as defined and then choose a value. Uh, and what I'm going to do is for active, I'm going to choose as defined and zero. So by default, when we insert a new record, we don't need to specify this value. It'll automatically be zero uh, and then thus requiring the user to activate their account. Now we can go ahead and change this while we're testing it. We don't actually need to uh, you know, ask a user to activate their email address, uh, activate via email, uh, but we can go ahead and change this. So let's go ahead and save this table. Uh, you'll see that we've got a success. Um, Oh, what's happened here? Okay, here we are. Um, so uh, we've created the the table. We can see all, all of our information in here. Um, uh, well, our, our structure essentially here. Uh, the browse tab here will allow you to browse the data. Um, so in this case, you can see a big red uh, cross, which means that the table is empty. So it says table seems to be empty. So what we're going to do is initially insert some dummy data into here because we're going to be building the uh, the login part of the system first because it's the easiest part to do. So once we have inserted some dummy data, we can actually log ourselves into the website and start to play around with how it might feel. And then really the registration is an entirely separate entity from the system because all it involves is inserting some data uh, in place into this database table. So let's go ahead and insert some, some dummy data into here. Um, I've clicked the insert tab at the top of uh, PHP My Admin, and I'm going to essentially just fill this form out here. Uh, you can see here that we've got a second uh, value, but we, we've got ignore ticked and we don't actually need to take this one into account. So uh, I'm going to choose a username, and that's just going to be Alex. Um, now passwords are a slightly trickier one because um, I'm not sure uh, what my password is going to be uh, encrypted. Uh, however, um, MySQL has a, a built-in MD5 uh, hashing function. So what we can actually do is we can go ahead and type in a value here. So I'm just going to choose password as my password. And from this drop-down list here, we have a, a list of functions that we can use. And I'm going to choose MD5. So essentially, we're saying uh, this value is going to be um, the result of the MD5 uh, function passing this value, which will give us an MD5 string. Uh, and we'll see this in a minute when we browse after we've finished. Uh, so first name, nothing special. It's just going to be my first name and then my last name as well. Uh, I'm also going to give my email address, so alex at phpacademy.org. And active, I'm going to leave set to zero uh, just for now. Um, but we, we can, you know, we can come in here anytime and go ahead and change that. So I'm going to go ahead and click go. Uh, go back to browse uh, and you can see that I've got uh, user ID 1. Notice that when I clicked on insert, I didn't actually enter any data here. It's automatically uh, given me uh, the value of one. I've got my username, which I provided, my MD5 uh, hashed uh, password, which you can see there it doesn't represent the uh, string password, uh, first name, last name, email, and active. So everything's there that we need to actually log ourselves in, uh, create a session, allow us to browse around, and actually authenticate a user to protect, protect against specific pages. So essentially we've created our database table or our database, our database table, and we filled this in with some, uh, some dummy data. Uh, and in the next part, we'll actually look at uh, building the site from there.